Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Mbaye. Um, I am an intern at the REIB, and I'm also an undergrad at UVM. And I'm here to introduce our Youth Poetry Contest finalists. So, yeah. So we had a lot of submissions over these past few weeks, and we have four of our finalists here today. So first performing, we have Mateo Baker. So give it up for Mateo Baker. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so my name is Mateo Baker. I use he, him, or they, them pronouns. And um, so when I think of Juneteenth, I think of embracing myself as a young black person, being who I am unapologetically without boundaries. This poem is a reflection of how I can hold so many different identities and narratives. And while I will always be a part of them, at the end of the day, I am still me. And my poem is titled Me. When people ask me what race I am, I say I'm love. Two people came together because of a deep love. When people stare at my brown skin, I say I'm me, an individual who can be anything they want. Society will not decide who I become. When people touch my hair, I say there's so much more to me than my beautiful crown. You treat me like an alien, but I'm still a person here that's grounded on this planet. When people mistake me with a black boy next to me who looks nothing like me, I say I'm different than anyone than everyone else, and I'll always be different. So are you. When people walk up to me and start speaking a language they think I know, I say stop assuming who you think I am. Don't categorize me. You will never be able to understand my rich history filled with years of blood, sweat, and tears, but also filled with joy and kindness and an everlasting love. If you want to know who or what I am, I'll tell you. I am a love, a beautiful, non-ordinary love. I am a rainbow, so many different amazing colors. But most importantly, I am me. Thank you. Okay, give it up one more time for Mateo. That was an amazing job. All right, up next we have Jaden Gomez. So give it up for Jaden Gomez. Hi. I'm Jaden Gomez, and I will be a sophomore in the fall. Freedom is not free, they say. But what you telling us about freedom? We were sentenced from the day we were born, condemned to a life of judgment, locked up and locked down by the inequities of an unjust system. But we, this generation, is not the generation of long ago. Today. We celebrate their emancipation, but reimagine our liberation. No more slavery of the mind. We know our true history. No, not just 1619. Our history began long before we were stolen from our homeland. We built the pyramids. No more slavery of the body. We've learned to love the skin we're in, the natural beauty within. Coffee, cocoa, caramel, cream. No more slavery of the soul. We know our true value, America, would not exist without black people. Pa pay us our worth. Today, we celebrate the ancestors, their emancipation, but today, we also reimagine our future and our liberation. Curtis Scott King said, struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. There is nothing that we will face today that is as dreadful as the atrocities they endured. Those who came before us persevered and overcame, and now our generation 
must reimagine our liberation. Freedom is not free, they say. So what is the cost for us, the descendants of the slaves you could not kill? Our minds, our bodies, our souls, now we will reap the benefits of their sacrifice. They have paid the price for our full victory. They have ransomed our futures with the currency of their bodies. They have redeemed our humanity. And today, we celebrate them. But let us make it clear to those who seek to subjugate us. Today, Juneteenth, we simply pause and acknowledge the triumphs of our ancestors, but we have not been distracted from the journey towards our complete liberation. Hey, amazing job, Jaden. Let's hear it one more time for Jaden. Okay, up next we have our third contestant, Kalema Suma. Hello everyone. Welcome, my name is Kalema Suma. I'm a rising senior at Burlington High School and it's an honor and a pleasure to share my voice with everyone here today. As I hope you all know, today is Juneteenth and up until this year, not many people, places or organizations recognized Juneteenth as a holiday. And even though most people have open access to the internet, a question I get quite often is, what is Juneteenth Freedom Jubilee or Liberation Day? Now, I really don't mind getting this question. I'm happy to answer, so please ask away. I'm proud to say that Juneteenth just so happens to be one of my favorite holidays during one of my favorite times of year, despite the little rain that we're getting right now. Um, but it can be really difficult answering this question and sometimes strange because I know that I have hundreds of answers and they are rarely permanent. You see, Juneteenth means an infinite amount of things to millions of people. I swear you could ask me this for the meaning every day until Juneteenth 2022, and I could give you 365 answers that all ring true. But if you would like to get into technical terms as to why we celebrate today instead of tomorrow or yesterday, you should know that 156 years ago, General Order Number 3 carried by the Major General Gordon Granger was delivered to the headquarters districts of Texas. And in General Order Number 3, President Abraham Lincoln's two and a half year old Emancipation Proclamation was transcribed. And for the first time, the black people of Texas tasted freedom. And when 1866 rolled around, they were ready to revisit their liberation. We're ready to commemorate every day they spent outside of chains. So is today a celebration? Of course it is. There's music and dance, delicious food, and a wonderful variety of performances where we uplift black and brown voices. But it's also a day of recognition and remembrance. Today, we recognize how far we've come from, the first, from that first taste of freedom, from the Virginia slave codes, from segregated counties and colored water fountains. We see every brother, sister, and sibling we've lost to be here, and we celebrate what they could have been. And we realize how much farther we have to go before we can rest. Today, we remember every sunset dinner table conversation every parent of a black child has to have to let their children know that the world doesn't treat us the same, that we can't always be ourselves because sometimes our expression is mistaken as violence, as a threat, as a challenge. We remember every person who was simply existing in their blackness and was somehow deemed too dangerous. For me, Juneteenth represents everywhere I've been and everywhere I'm going. Juneteenth is every twist and kink in my curly crown that I used to wish would just fall straight and how I learned how to code switch before I could multiply. Today is every minute of my life I've spent correcting the pronunciations of my name despite knowing that the folks who always seem to trip it up on their tongues seem to have gotten adiola when I roll with a giza. Down, first try for a TikTok trend. Today, I remember every night I've spent up wondering how. How can I, a single teenager in Burlington, Vermont, change society's mind, show the world that my blackness isn't a threat, that I'll cooperate, put my hands up, there's nothing to see here and no trouble is wanted. And how despite my racing mind and infinite well of thoughts, sunshine comes peeking through my window and here comes that crack of dawn kissing my skin, reminding me that I'm still here, we're still here, and that, that is a victory in its own right. Some days, I need to remind myself that I can't change the world with the snap of my fingers, 
That would be nice though, wouldn't it? Or even just a time machine would be quite helpful so I could go back to June 19th, 1865 and make sure general order number three was followed to the T or at least warn my people that this isn't the end, that even in 2021, we're still fighting. But what is blackness if not resilient? Our world has been through everything and anything, and I can name more than one time we were almost erased. But here comes the 19th of June again to remind me that we've made it. Another year, another trip around the sun, through blood, sweat, and tears, we're still here. Juneteenth is the way the sun's rays hit the light in my eyes and the, they glisten like honey in the summertime, defining every hue, shade of, and tint of brown glowing with, from within. And how when those same rays hit my skin, it begins to sparkle like the stars lighting my path through the night, reminding me that it's nice to be kissed by the sun and that my black is beautiful. Because Juneteenth is our triumph and victory. Juneteenth is every word that's left Sojourner Truth's lips, ringing loud and clear with her demand for freedom. Juneteenth is every callus on Harriet Tubman's feet and every scar on Frederick Douglass's body. It's the jail cells of Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, and Annie Lee Cooper. It's called at Coven. She was only 15, two years younger than me, when she refused to give up her bus seat nine months before Rosa Parks. It's Ruby Bridges taking her first steps into William France Elementary School, paving the way for students like me. It's Coretta Scott King taking the helm of the March for Freedom after MLK's death. May he rest in peace. It's the grieving mothers, fathers, and siblings of every unplanned martyr. Juneteenth is every time I don't bother correcting my tome so I don't become the angry black girl. Every time I stop myself from using my white people voice and every time I leave my house with my curls out. And every time I, someone, I tell someone, no, you can't touch my hair. And every time I leave my house, oh, and every person who has ever asked if Kelly would be an appropriate name, it isn't today, it isn't tomorrow, and it will never be. Juneteenth is every breath and step I take. Juneteenth is the ring of freedom in my ears that will never go quiet until the day I die because I cannot rest until every day is Juneteenth, until I know that general order number three was followed to the T. So please enjoy Juneteenth, have some food, sing, dance, because today is our, rest, is our day of peace, of rest, of soul, and celebration before we rise and fight another day. Thank you. Okay, let's hear it one more time for Kalemwa. All right, now we've reached our fourth and our last contestant. So let's hear it for Nala Meyer. I'm short, sorry, I'm really small. Um, I'm Nala Meyer, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm gonna be reading My Black Queen, written by my amazing mom, who is a black queen herself, Freen Paris Meyer. <laughs> no, I will not let you, my queen, question your beauty, your warmth, your grace. No, not today, my black queen. Do not be apologetic for the way you show up in this space. Allow yourself to see what I see, soulful in your walk, passionate in your talk. You are not being too dramatic, too angry, or too loud. A queen crowned in her natural coils with melanin skin as rich as brown soil. So no, they're not worth it, my queen. Forget what they say you should be, or should not, because let's be real. You are perfection, my mahogany queen. Now let us soak up your black magic until our hearts and souls are full. Much love to all our black queens out here today. Thank you. All right, let's hear it one more time for Nala. Amazing job. Okay, so now I'm gonna invite all of our contestants back up to the stage.
And let's hear it one more time for all of them. <laughs> Okay, so all of our contestants did such a good job and it was really difficult to pick a winner and rank them in order. So we're just gonna announce our first place prize. So can I have a drum roll? Okay, first place goes to Kalema Sua. Suma. Good job. so much. I, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but I wanted to say just like something real quick. Um, I'm really impressed by all the people that came today, and I'm very thankful for everybody who did. Um, but just a reminder to keep coming. Juneteenth is one day that we have out of the 365. And after today, we need to keep celebrating and uplifting every single BIPOC person in Vermont and around the world um, and keep protecting them because every single life matters, including those of BIPOC. So thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you, Kalema. And thank you all contestants for participating and for sharing your pieces with us. We hope you guys all have a happy Juneteenth. So. Thank you.